In this tutorial, we're going to talk about funneling the phoneme list. Uh, if you've read Stop Staring, Jason Osipa talks about uh, the process of funneling a phoneme list, which is uh, taking all of the phonemes that are in a particular line of dialogue and reducing it to just the core set that's needed to uh, reproduce a, a good quality animation. Um, and he does it by hand, but we've got a Python script that uh, attempts to do it um, automatically in FaceFX Studio so that you can run it after analysis. Uh, automatically if you like. And in the Miss Civilization animation, um, she actually sp speaks rather quickly around two seconds and the mouth uh, moves up and down, gives a little bit of a flappy jaw or flappy lips that uh, doesn't look as realistic as I'd like. And generally that's a result of uh, rapid speech and uh, too many phonemes, um, which you could resolve by hand by uh, removing a few of the unnecessary ones. Uh, but much better to have an automated approach. And we're going to run the script. And one of the first things we're going to see is that the some of the curves are going from owned by a user to or owned by analysis to owned by user. Uh, when they were owned by analysis, then moving phonemes would actually uh, influence the curves. Uh, but now that they're owned by user, the phoneme is the phoneme bar is is separate, and only the keys control these curves. And we did that because we actually modify some of the keys uh, in the script, and so they can no longer be controlled by both the uh, the keys which are edited and the phoneme bar. So that's an important concept in FaceFX Studio, the own by analysis. Um, and another thing that you know it did was it obviously removed some of the phonemes um, uh, before it uh, started messing with the curves, um, and then finally it added some events and. What it did is it added events for the uh, for tongue movements, and you know if you know in FaceFX Studio, every phoneme basically um, there's a mapping which which um, puts the character into the the position that they need to make that phoneme. So something like T would open the mouth and move the tongue to the uh, roof, um, and if we remove the T phoneme and then just put in a little tongue event that only has the T roof component. Uh, we can actually uh, get rid of some crowded areas of phonemes and get a smoother animation. And so that's what we've done is that we've removed a lot of these um, uh, phonemes and replaced them with events. Now, if you have, uh, there's a speech snippets external animation set, um, which we can load up here. So we can see this uh, this dot anim set that's right at the same level as the uh, Evolver sam uh, face effect sample content. If you load that into your character, uh, that's got some pretty good defaults if you're using the default mapping for uh, driving curves from those events. Um, and the Evolver content, um, you'll notice uh, the dot face effects file. The Evolver content also has a dot fxl file, uh, which will mount that speech snippet anim set automatically every time you load that Evolver file. Um, and so that's an external anim set, uh, which is just a bunch of animations in a group uh, that's mounted at runtime. Um, so that way I can share it across multiple characters. Um, you know, if you're if you're using the FaceFX XDK in game, uh, anim sets are useful um, so that you, so you can control memory a little better. But in FaceFX Studio, they're useful to to share the same animations across different characters. Um, so that's a brief introduction to scripting, external animation sets. Um, events, uh, phonemes, curves, um, and all to uh, get a, a little bit of a smoother animation for uh, funneling the phoneme list.